Hi, I'm Ian and welcome back to Astro Time Traveller. In this series of videos what I'm going to do is over the spring, which is probably April, May, maybe even to a bit of June, uh, try and take images of M16 and in particular the Pillars of Creation. Now it's something I did last year but with a longer focal length telescope. This year I'm going to do it with my Esprit 120 and just see how it goes. The only trouble is um, it comes up very low in my sky so I'll show you in a minute but I have to go uh, over the top of a, a shed that's in my uh, garden and therefore I really have to image it at the moment probably after 3 a.m. in the morning and I can only do about an hour, an hour and a half at maximum. So I'm going to do this over a number of episodes and I'll show you the progress as I go along from having a low number of uh, images through to hopefully getting uh, maybe 50 to 100 by the time I'm finished to try and get some more definition on the actual pillars. So stay tuned and I'll show you how I'm going to set this up and some of the difficulties in doing that. So here's my setup, uh, which is the uh, Skywatcher Esprit 120 ED telescope, which I seem to get a focal length of uh, about 864 millimeters. Uh, and on top of that, I've got the 280 millimeter uh, Skywatcher uh, guide scope and the uh, ZWO ASI 120 mm as my guide camera. And then at the back of the telescope, I've got the um, field flattener so uh, that really helps to get round stars right out to the edges and within that I've actually got a filter and uh, in here today I've got the Optolong L Extreme and just got to want to see if I can bring out some of the uh, elements of the uh, M16 Pillars of Creation uh, and the back of that I've got my ASI uh, 294 MC Pro one shot colour camera and then I've got my electronic uh, focuser, the ZWO, one of those, and all of that's attached to the good old favourite, the ASI Air Pro, which makes everything run, and it's all sitting on the uh, Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. So that's my setup, so that's looking pretty good. It's there parked and it's facing towards the north, but actually where I'm going to have to uh, take the uh, M16 is over the top of that shed, and actually it comes up just by that tree. Um, at the moment it's coming up about 3 a.m. in the morning. So I set something up in planning and then try to aim for that to finish so it can start doing M16 at about um, 3 o'clock for about an hour and a half. But we'll see how it goes. Over the coming weeks, obviously that'll get earlier and earlier. So hopefully I'll be able to take more images um, earlier. You can see I've got a big electricity pole there as well so that comes into play. So all of those are some of the areas I'm going to watch out for. This is kind of the southeast towards the south area. So south is pretty much by those poles and they've got southeast and then right around here I've got east. And the other thing to watch out for is the moon. So tonight we've got a pretty high moon. I think it's about uh, 80 some odd percent and the next couple of nights it's getting up to 90 percent. So although I've got the an extreme filter I know we're going to get washed out a bit from the moon but let's see how it goes and what I'll try and do is a quick episode on each of the uh, sessions I do just to show you how the progress goes on getting done with uh, M16 and the Pillars of Creation. So quite an interesting project over the next couple of months. Stay tuned and we'll see how it goes. So I took 15 images and here you can see them in my ASI Air Pro at the end of the night. Um, I'm just flicking back through each of them and they weren't bad. Obviously the moon out kept a lot of light into the actual frame and there was a bit of cloud around. So of the 15, I eventually ended up processing initially 11 uh, images, but later on I went back and uh, re-looked at those and, and actually moved them down to only seven images. So in the very final picture you'll see uh, in this video, that will be just the seven images that I took. But I usually just go through each of them at the end of the night and just see what they look like, and then I can delete some of the ones that are clearly uh, too much cloud, etc., before moving on into Deep Sky Stacker. So I'll just show you what I did do in Deep Sky Stacker. So I open it up, um, 
open up the, the light frames for M16 for that light. So I just go into my folder, find the lights, and then click on that, and then just download those 11 images. So I got rid of some of the ones with clouds. And then all I did this time was just add a dark, a dark frame uh, from my dark library for uh, a 300 uh, second at uh, minus 10 um, and process that and then just go through and uh, do the normal routines with Deep Sky Stacker and I think I did uh, two times drizzle on this one and then just let it run. So it takes a few seconds. As I said, I, I only used one dark frame here and uh, a master frame. But later on, I actually uh, reviewed the uh, 11 images and I actually cut it down to only seven. But this time I, I did it with uh, not only a dark frame, but some flat frames and some dark flats that I took the following evening, having not touched the telescope or moved it. So it was valid to still do that. But as you can see, it's quickly processing it. I'll just jump ahead now and we can see what the kind of final image looks like once Deep Sky Stacker has completely uh, pulled it together and uh, got it into... Uh, the last uh, loading image. So here we go, it's just coming up to that now. So it takes a few seconds, but uh, there it is. So it's coming out a little bit mauve on this one, probably because I didn't have the uh, any flats or dark flats. Um, but you can clearly see the pillars of creation there. It's upside down, so I'll, I'll turn that around probably in a minute. But from there, let's go into Pix Insight and let's just have a look at the image. So if we open up uh, that image, which I have stored uh, in my M file for all kind of uh, M nebulas and galaxies and just go into there. So there's the image I've saved. Let's just open that up and let's just do an auto stretch and we'll see what came out. Um, so it just takes a second or two and there we go. So I don't think that looks too bad. Well, uh, let's reverse it to 180 degrees so we can actually see uh, the pillars in the normal way uh, facing upwards. And there we go. If we go right in there, now that's just 11 images on this particular version, so that's I think that's pretty good. You can actually see the, the pillars quite quite well, and then clearly I've uh, done no processing on this yet, so I'll go away and do that in a while. And as I said, what I actually did was I went back and did uh, just seven images, but fully stacked with uh, flats, dark flats, and darks. And then I'll show you at the end of this video what that looks like. And then I'll come back with more videos over the next month just showing as this progresses as I take more images of the Pillars of Creation and we'll see how it goes.